and William. Today we're going to be talking about USB attacks. So, question, what do you do when you find a USB laying on the ground? Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it into your computer. Yes. Of course. Why do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> it could have the owner's contact information inside of it so you can return it to them. It could also have a Bitcoin wallet on it. It could have a lot of money if you want a lot of money. Alternatively, it could steal your files and credentials and then send them to the actual owner. <laughs> so it's a risk of one type of thing. So what types of attacks can we do with USBs? We can harness credentials um, and we're able to bypass um, air gap systems because we're not needing the internet to do it because we have physical access to the device. That being said, you need physical access to the device. Which is difficult, but since I stole Trent's laptop, I have physical access to the device. Um, an example where this happened in real world was the Stuxnet, Stuxnet hack. This shut down um, an Iranian nuclear program, or it damaged it severely. Um, it started, yeah, what's up? Uh, it was a backward that allowed foreign governments access to it. So it was. Say what? It was, a, it was a backdoor for outsiders access to the power plant. Like, what was? Stuxnet was. Yeah, so Stuxnet. It originated off of what gave them the backdoor, where they passed around a lot of USBs. These USBs, you, um, they would look and act like normal file systems, but there, if you clicked on one of the things, or if you clicked on one of the files, it looked like a shortcut, but then you'd click on it and it would run um, a function that would give them access if you were a part of the nu nuclear program. It was dormant on all devices except for that one, but it was originally passed around via uh, flash drives. Who did it? Who did it? Nobody knows! <laughs> There have been claims that the U.S. government and Israel did it, but, you know, the U.S. government denies that, so clearly it's not true, because everything the U.S. government says is absolutely true. Since we're Americans, we know this for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, most of these USB attacks, they require you to interact with the computer, either if you have just the files and you want someone to click on, somebody has to actually click on those files for them to work, or if you have like a live boot, um, you need to physically uh, type things in to mount the drive and get the stuff. However, there's another way to do it with a rubber ducky where you don't have to click anything. Um, so let's look at rubber duckies. What is a rubber ducky? This rubber ducky is floating in Lake in Canada. It's it's a big duck that they have floating around Canada, um, and it's my favorite duck. But what is uh, a, a rubber ducky for hacking? This is. So what it is, it's basically a microcontroller. So this is a computer, and then this is your actual memory. Um, this is where you put the payload on, and then you put it in the rubber ducky, and then you're golden. How does it work? It acts like a keyboard. The computer, when you plug it into a computer, or the computer in here will say that it is a keyboard, so it can just inject keyboard commands um, like you would as a person, except for it's a lot faster because this can write a thousand words per minute and I don't think any of you can. But I personally tried it. It also lets you win type racer as long as you make it slow enough that type racer doesn't call you a robot and <laughs> Fortunately it does sometimes do that. So why is it hard to stop? Because there's inherent trust in the user that is typing. Computers trust the user typing as a person typing. Uh, yeah. So what can we do with a rubber ducky? You can do basically whatever you can do with just a keyboard, which turns out to be a lot when you get into a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is getting a token using only the clipboard. So Command-Shift-J will give you the dev tools, and then you can navigate around in the console with command right bracket, and then we can move to our token. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to be stealing an authentication token. You might be asking yourself, what is an authentication token? So it's basically the token that the server will give you after you've logged in. Once you've logged in, you are that user. So if you have the token that says you are that user, you can do whatever you want. This bypasses two-factor authentication because you've already authenticated to get the original one. This is a little script that you can put into a dev console 
um, specifically discords that will allow you to log in. Uh, here is where we're going to go to get it. So once we get into our dev tools, we go into the network, um, and then we will scroll down to the authentication and find our token. So if you plug that token in, you will be able to log in as me. So people on YouTube can log in as me until I change that password. Oops. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, first we need to construct our payload. How do we do that? We visit our handy website. For those of you who don't know, our club does no website. So if you go over to the equipment section, we can scroll down. This is actually our club's rubber ducky, not mine personally, as they're like 60 bucks. They're fun to play with, but yeah. So if we go here, we can get an encoder. So in here is where you'll put in all of your commands, and then you can generate it, and then download it. Um, there are also some fun resources with different payloads that you can try. So, let's get to it. So what we're going to do is basically with the rubber ducky, we're going to open, we're going to go to Discord. And then we're going to go into our dev tools, and then come over to the network, and then come down here, and right here is that picture I was showing you before, but now we have to get there using only the keyboard and none of the trackpad. Um, so, here's the command. Um, so Ducky uses its own script. It's a scripting language, just like HTML or CSS. It does things. Um, these delays are just asking it um, to wait. So when you first plug it in, when you first plug it in, you need to wait a couple seconds. These are milliseconds, so that's a two-second wait. And then for those of you who don't know, on Windows, Windows R will allow you to search for a program. Then we can open our program and take the credential. So, let's see. So, we have a desktop, nothing's on it. Then we can just plug in our rubber ducky. And it's going to open Chrome here, and then go to Discord like I did before. And then open the dev tools. I've slowed it down so that way you can guys can kind of see what's happening. It's going to move over. And then we're going to search for our API. <coughs> and then we have to tab through all of these since we can't use a mouse. So we get to tab several times. Then, again, we can't use a mouse, so we just go down. Eventually, we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get to this authentication token, where we then will right-click on it and copy the value. Next, we're going to open PowerShell and give this value back to us. Since the rubber ducky can't store it, we have to send it off ourselves. So I'll open PowerShell, and we'll um, go to a webhook. <laughs> and if you heard that ding, that means we win. <laughs> um, so back over here. We see my fantastic Discord. I like ducks. This is my own server. Um, and we see this value here. We also see this value again because I've tested it and it doesn't work. <laughs> um, so we'll take this value and then we can go to our script here. And So what this script is doing is it's going to take um, our token that we found here um, and it's going to insert that into the console for us. So then if we go to our <coughs> new person, 
someone who's never logged into Discord, or a lead hacker, because I don't like doing hacker things on my personal accounts. So we go to Discord.com, and we're already logged in. Oh wait, we are signed up. Cool. So. Then you can go into the tools and we can see, hold up, hold up. If you're trying to copy paste in here, you're probably being scanned. Fortunately for us, we're doing the scanning, so that's okay. <laughs> and then we sit here, give it a couple seconds. And then maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. It won't. I copied and pasted it before and it worked, but hey, it worked now. Now we can just open Discord. Or maybe not. <laughs> anyway, so I did also download an extension in case that didn't work. I didn't trust that code, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to go through and it's going to do the same things and it's going to steal our token. Yeah. 
Right. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you executed the core thumbs up, then you also might be able to do some real fancy things like not actually even having to open the browser or like you just might be able to pull cookies out of Chrome by if they're stored on your storage and funky things like Okay, so now we have a new one. And now we can see all of this amazing Discord channel, but as a bot. Because we made this one a bot role in case it gets hacked. So you guys won't have permissions. <coughs> Wait, is your, <laughs> does this thing have permissions? That's <laughs> <laughs> a good Cause question. Because I, I can't see the cabinet then, it just looks like a normal person. We can't see our Discord. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I had to join our Discord. I gotta inflate the number of the server server systems. Say that no permissions. Cool. So yeah, that's how you log in off the web. And then we also have another script. So you can do this in the app as well. Um there can be a way. <laughs> there is a way actually. But so if we go to Notepad, and then if you go to Discord settings, you can copy paste this line into um, this file, which is at discord slash settings.json. And if you put that in there, dangerous enable dev tools only enable if you know what you're doing. You can then open dev tools in Discord, <laughs> which allows you do similar things <coughs> before, where we can then see our token. Unfortunately, when you're in the app, you have to reload to get these tokens to appear, and then you lose focus. The focus comes over here, so you can't use the mouse to get back over here. To my knowledge, if anyone knows how you like switch focus on a screen, then we can get this working. Help tab? You help tab? That'll switch between applications between the same application. application. Right, so we're, right now it has focus on this side of it after you refresh, and we need it to be in the tools. And you can't tab over that wall. Yeah, so when you tab, it'll just keep going around in here. So yeah, you can do all of the things like message your favorite person, but you can't do much else. Maybe that was in your way. Yeah, it's like they don't want people putting in Discord tokens. Maybe that's why they put that in their dev tools. Windows D? Try Windows D? No. No, that's not it. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, when we're doing that, we just open We can just open Notepad and then open this file and then paste this in there and then we can enable it. Alright, so that's basically what's up. So what is the token that is being taken in this? Like, it's not a 
password, is it? Right. So the token, it's a token that's given to you after you log in. So when you log in, you go past your two-factor authentication, you're then signed in. It gives you that token, and when you present that token, that's your token as a logged in user. So it's kind of like a password in the sense that like it's unique, and if you have it, you'll get to be logged in. But it's a lot longer, as we can see in here. It's several characters long. Um, yeah. <laughs> so guessing it is very difficult, and so this this is the token that you present the API calls with and say, hey, I'm already authenticated, you can just give me my data. So if I take that and go on a different device, then I can have that data. So it's that. Does the, does the original um, login session have to still be running then from that you, the, that you use to get the token? The session does not have to be running, but there is an expiration time on it, which is what, why I wasn't able to log in the first time, because the token expired. So these tokens, if you look, they are slightly different at the end here. They start off the same, but they will end up being different. Um, and yeah, that's why I have several tokens in here, um, because they expire after time. Like, these two are the same because they were within a few minutes of each other, um, but then they become different later on. So yeah, that's rubber duckies. If you guys want to use a rubber ducky, we do check this out as a club. But just know, it is illegal to log into other people's accounts. Do not log into other people's accounts. I can't stop you, but I can recommend against it. Also, don't log into USBs. Yeah, also, don't log into USBs. Uh, also, don't leave your computer unlocked with USB ports open and usable. Because, like, even if you don't plug it in, somebody just walks by and unlocks laptop, stick in USB, yeah. and you're gone. And then, I mean, so if you're just walking around by your hall and someone's in eSports, having this card open, and then they're like, oh, I've had too much G Fuel, I need to go to the bathroom, <laughs> and then they leave their computer unlocked, you can just take their Discord switch, which may have happened to somebody. Yeah, I know who it happened to. <laughs> <laughs> which might be the rationale for this study. I should be in something game. But, uh, with that being said, it works for me. Are you may be asking me this. I can admit you were busy. But wait, I lock my computer when I was That doesn't really stop you if you have a different USB, which is a live boot of Kali Linux. So, if I lock my computer, you can just control it. Yeah. <laughs> so, you're going to want to plug in this one, your, uh, your live boot, to your victim machine. And I'm not sure it'll project as it's booting up. So that's why you just get this lovely picture that I took before. So when you start it up, you'll just click the F2 button. And then we wait for Trent's old laptop to boot up. Until it eventually gets to this screen. Makes a beep. Okay, so now I'm looking at the same thing you are. You'll just click enter on that, and then we'll be moving into our calendar. I'm also looking at a black screen because Cali does take a hot second to boot. Yeah, basically what we're going to do is we're going to tell this computer, hey, I'm an operating system, I'd like to use your hardware. And it's going to be like, okay. Because Windows lets you do that. And then once I do that, I'll then have root access from my live boot instead of the permissions that are on the laptop itself. <coughs> Does like taking a sign. Does anyone have any questions over rubber duckies or USBs or this is booting up? So you tell me stock time was just a rubber ducky 
No, rubber duck, it was specifically not a rubber ducky attack. So that was an attack um, where they had a bunch of flash drives with viruses on them. So when you opened one of them, it would infect your computer, and then it would mutate and continue to infect other computers. But it only infected those that were like running certain software that was specific to the nuclear program. Um, otherwise, it would just try to mutate and continue on. So, now we have Kali. Chad, do you know how you can predict this one? Because I have a terminal up on mine. Just open settings and do Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah. So, view what drives are open on your computer. You run ls blk, and then you can see the various drives. So, this one is the oh, 460 gigabyte one. That is the hard drive of the actual computer. This one's my this one's the flash drive that we're on, and then all the other stuff is random stuff that we learned about, but then never really care about. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to mount the SDA. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount the hard drive on here into our mount directory. And then we're going to do it because I say so. And then we can just change directories into slash init. So once we're in here, we now have the Windows operating system. So we can then steal people's secrets. So if we go into users, uh, we can go into our favorite user, Icebear. And then we can so it's CDC or CDC. Cool. So now we can see Ice Bears desktop. We can then copy thing to our desktop. That was for when you were doing the typing challenge. I made you a user, and then the password's easier to type in. So then we've just taken this thing file from his computer to our computer. And since this is a flash drive, we can store it locally. So when I take the flash drive out, I'll still have access to this thing. You can, if you actually wanted to be productive with something, you'd probably steal something like SSH keys or actual sensitive files. But really, you can take whatever you want. You could also copy the entire thing to your flash drive if you have a large enough flash drive. But this is a 32 gigabyte flash drive, and this is 500 gigabytes of storage. So, you know, we can also make new files. Maybe we're real name. So yeah, then we can yeah, steal the file. <coughs> then, so yeah, that's what I have for today.